Hi everyone, welcome to the intro to Mixed Moves tutorial. Here you're going to learn about the basics of using and editing Mixed Moves. Mixed Moves is a new and unique way to animate with iPhone 5. It uses motion graph technology found only in iPhone 5 to combine motions together naturally by using pre-calculated transitions. The Mixed Moves panel will automatically apply these transitions, so all you need to do is just double click and apply them. It's a quick and easy way to create natural motion with smooth transitions for your characters. Let's start off with G5 Chuck here. Now there's a couple of ways you can apply mixed moves. One is by using the mixed moves panel on the right side of your screen. Or you can use the individual motion clips in the content manager to the left. They are all separated into directory categories. So what I'm going to do is find a specific one that starts with the idle 01 motion and do a squat. You can see that my character will begin his movement naturally and squat down. Mixed moves includes motions that are calculated for both male and female characters. If I go back and add in my female character, then I can search the action directory on the left for her equivalent action. When I find it, I can simply double click the action to apply it to my selected character. You'll notice when I play back that both characters have notably different animations as male and female. Now you can also apply mixed moves from the mixed moves panel found in the animation tab. Simply click on the mixed moves button at the top. When the panel opens, I can simply double click my action to get it to play. Notice that in the bottom of my mixed moves panel, there is a selection box called Auto Loop Motion. When you have this selected, it basically just means that your motion will play and then continue on to a sort of idle state where the character is still moving. The motion will not repeat like with Puppet Motion. If I ever want to remove the animation from my character, all I need to do is right click on the character and then select Remove All Animation. You can see that as I scrub the timeline, all the animation is now gone. So now I'll turn off the auto loop and play the motion once again. This time, it will end when the actual motion ends. In the Mixed Moves panel, you don't need to worry about the transitions, because here they will be naturally applied, sometimes even using other transition motions automatically. You'll see the natural transition as I move my character up onto one knee. So let's try to do a lying down motion from one knee. When I double click the new action, you'll see that my character will hesitate a bit, then move down into a transitional prone state. From there, he will transition down to lying on his stomach, all in a single natural motion. When I open up the timeline, you can see that just like when applying the motions from the content manager, clips will appear in the timeline with similar results. The final pose won't be reached until closer to the end of the clip. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how you can cut down transition time and even cut out certain transitional motions altogether. I have a female character now, which means I'll want to go up to the menu at the top and select female to bring up a whole new range of motions tailored for our Gwyn character. From here, I'm going to select a lying sideways motion. Watch as Gwyn goes through her transitional stages to lie sideways on the ground. As you can see, it takes quite a while. What I want to do is cut down on some of the transitional time to create a smoother animation. First, I'll open up the timeline. Notice that the action is all together in one big clip, so what I'm going to do is break that clip up into different parts, cut out some of the unnecessary transition time, and blend it back together. First, I want to cut out some of this time my character spends on her knees. So I'll go to the section of the clip where I want the cut to begin, right click on my motion clip, and select Break. Then I'll move down the timeline to the time I want to transition to, and break once again. Then it's just a matter of bringing the clips together. But you'll see when I play back that there is a jerky motion at the transition. What I can do to get rid of that is simply extend the transition time from my second clip. This will make a more natural and slow upward motion as you see here. The next thing you may have noticed from the clip 
is that my character spends a lot of time in the prone position. To fix this, what I'll do first is go to the beginning of her transition into the prone position and break the motion clip there. After that, I want to go to the point where she's beginning her transition to the lying position and break once again. As I did before, I'll select the transitional clip and delete it. I'll then move the clip over and extend the transitional area once again. Now notice that when I play back, there is a natural transition from one position straight down into the lying down position. Now when I play back the entire clip, you can see that the motion is a bit more fluid and natural, without all the transitional delays. The final thing I want to show you is how you can combine mixed moves with your own custom motions. For this, I'm going to go into the Content Manager and apply a talk motion. This can be found in the Mixed Moves Communication 200 pack which includes a whole range of other natural motions that have been pre-calculated to transition together seamlessly. So let's go ahead and apply the Talk03 motion here. This motion makes it seem almost like she's the host of a TV show. So what if she wanted to point to something on the screen? Well, this is where the Motion Layer Editor comes in handy. But first, we have to do something to the area of the clip where we want the point to happen. I'll play ahead first to the area of the clip that I want my actual point to end. I'm going to break the clip at this point. The reason I'm doing this is because for the first part of the clip, I want to remove the animation from her left arm. After I break the clip, then I can simply go over and right click on the first section, select Remove Animation, and then select my character's left arm. Now notice that when I play back, Gwen's left arm will not be moving, but the action still looks relatively natural. So now I'll scrub to the place where I want my point to begin and open the Motion Layer Editor. I'm going to add a keyframe using the Lazy Man's method here by simply grabbing the hand and moving it ever so slightly. I'll then scrub ahead to the part of the clip where I want the point to be at its full extent and move the hand out. The body will naturally follow the movement using Human IK. I'll rotate and do my other adjustments to the hand as well as to my character's finger to get it to point slightly. After that, I'm going to copy that keyframe by right-clicking and selecting Copy, then paste it further down the timeline when I want the point to end. Then I'll go to the point where I want my action to return to normal and press the Reset button in the Motion Layer Editor, which will bring my arm back in sync with the motion clip. Now when I play back, you'll notice the smooth transition of my motion. If I want, I can adjust it further to my liking by simply fooling around with the position of my keyframes. If I move the last keyframe into the second clip, you'll be able to notice that it starts to move naturally again along with the second clip before it returns to its final position. It's that easy to naturally animate your own virtual host by combining iClone's powerful animation tools.